On Tuesday, as Jesus walked back to Jerusalem from Bethany with his disciples, he passed a fig tree. Looking for and expecting to find fruit, he found only leaves, and so he cursed the tree that was not fulfilling its purpose. When he came to the temple, in essence, he also cursed the religious leaders who had the leaves of profession, of religion, but no fruit of real faith and righteousness before God. Woe to you, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to be people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. How will you escape from being condemned to hell? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. Look, your house is left you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? he asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, all these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That's how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. At the conclusion of our reading, on this Tuesday of Holy Week, we would do well to live our lives in the awareness that Jesus also comes to us, looking for and expecting to find not just the leaves of religious profession or platitudes, but the real fruit of a right relationship with God that produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus is coming. All the signs he gave point to the fact that his coming is soon. When he does come, what will he find in your life? Today, make sure that he will find not the leaves of religion, but the fruit of a right relationship with God because you have placed your sincere faith in Jesus as your own Savior and your own Lord.